Hey there, how's it going? Uh, in this video, uh, we are going to just add a, tac a caption to our really cool slider that we created out of the slick.js being properly set up in HubSpot, right? Uh, so if you didn't get that video, it's way back there somewhere. You could probably find it. Um, but essentially what we did was we uh, we went to Ken Wheeler's uh, slick.js uh, GitHub page and we downloaded the package for slick.js and then we looked through some of the slick.js features that are available. Fancy, hey. Um, now we've we've got uh, we've got this slider here that is I just realized is actually just is missing. Uh, we don't have those dots there, so I'm not seeing. You know what? We'll get back to it. Uh, I do want to add them. There's a there's a control for it. I just need to search it. So, um, so now uh, let's add a caption to each image. And then I, I think we kind of looked at how this works, right? So essentially what we have here, uh, I can add uh, pictures of my dinosaurs as well. Because who doesn't like a good T-Rex? Did that add? Yeah. Dino one. As you can see, it's very easy to add items to this. Where are they? They're right there. As you can see, they're cropped, right? Uh, 200 is pretty large. Um, in the CSS file, so we did do the 200%. We can, uh, now we can play with it. We can click on the image itself and we'll get that 200% up there at the top of the CSS panel. And then we can just hit the down arrow and just see what happens, right? Get a little weird, get crazy. Oh, see, now you can already see, go back. Come back. Gonna go away before I can get to it. We just kind of want to make the smallest one fit. There we go. Right? Yeah, and boom, look at that. The T Rex fits. That looks a little cool, but it's cropped. You can tell it's cropped. Uh the space images, they're they're cropped out of a bigger picture of space that is space. So you don't gotta worry about those much. Uh now we want to add a, a, a caption option here. So let's go ahead and just change that to 140. I don't know why I changed it. We actually need to go into the CSS file and change it to 140. 14. There we go. Publish that and then go over into fields. So uh, again, we've got this slider container uh, group here. It's containing a label, a text field uh, for a label for the item and it's containing an image field for an image for the item. Each item is an instance of this group and this group is a repeater field. So you can create multiple instances of it from the page editor, which is what I was just doing with the add button there. You can also move them. Let's move my dinos up to the top. Like it, I like the T-Rex better though. If I'm being honest, That that's cool. All right, we can move them, we can delete them. I don't particularly want to do that, but let's get rid of uh, random. There we go. I hate, I hate to lose a good picture and a slider, but we did it for the sake of science and uh, it worked out because we can, we can delete them. Um, you can clone them, uh, which has its advantages, right? Um, especially with content. I don't know exactly why you'd want to repeat certain content, but maybe it's a CTA button that you want repeated and you just clone it. That way you don't have to keep adding it. That's cool. Uh, and then you can edit it, which in this case gives you the alt text, which is good for SEO. It gives you the ability to choose the image and then it gives you a label. Uh, we are gonna go over here. We're going to go to action. Nope. Yep. Add field on the group. And you know, whew. I really don't like using rich text editors, to be honest. But I guess it's fine, right? It's just, uh, I don't know. Once people are, some people shouldn't be able to do inline markup. 
I guess is the only is is just my only beef with it. I, I it just they it, it makes it too easy just to just inject trash and then someone's got to go in there and clean that out someday. Otherwise, well, I don't I don't really know. Well, I don't really, really I don't really know what would happen. But here we go. Uh, we're gonna go to uh, this class or to this div over here. We're gonna add a div, and it's gonna be a class of. We need this to be absolute. We're gonna have to. I don't think I have any z index rules set for really .css, but we are gonna stack this on top. And I put it in a div. We're gonna. We gotta. <laughs> this this stinks. Okay, so I don't know if you guys, uh, if you're familiar at all with the repeater fields. You can't just copy, see, they won't let you even copy it, uh, the snippet or the value, because it's part of a repeater field now. So what you have to do is you have to copy the whole snippet of the repeater field, paste it into your work area, and then you have to find item.caption, or, and this is, or, you could just type item, which is this, caption, which is the name of the module variable, or the field variable, Hubble variable name caption lowercase because it's named caption uh, when you create the field obviously when you change it it could be anything but um, in this case it's caption so you, there's just two ways to do it right uh, I wish there was just a copy and paste and just throw it in there but I guess I'm being a little little picky there considering it's already pretty easy to do this uh, anyways so we've got our caption and what that's going to do is it's going to output the HTML from the rich text module which again is HTML, so rich text modules, uh, just, uh, okay, but it's fine. That's, that's my opinion. Uh, now we have this, let's do a BG of, I don't know, I don't know what the colors are exactly uh, for this style sheet, but we're gonna do BG-4 and just see what happens. Now, I, let's do an edit, let's, let's give this a default content of, Image caption. Yeah, that's fine. And then down here in the slider. Yeah, I was in the right place the whole time. Oh man, come on. Where are we at? Image the HTML is right there. Okay, and we are we want to get this. So let's do SS dash cap. Okay, and then ss.image, let's give that a z index of, I don't know, let's just do one. I think zero would work, but whatever. I do my headers and whatever, like, stuff that floats at the very top, like at a thousand. So one is the bottom. Sometimes I'll do a negative, you know, uh, that depends, just depends on the situation. Some negatives are cool to play with. Uh, ss dash cap, we want to give that a, a z index of, oh, 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 z index of two. Now there's a good chance that because of the, the, the hierarchy, right, the image is above this div and they're both set to absolute. So naturally uh, this would come second. And so there would, for it be at the top, but in this situation, in this, I really probably should put Z index controls into the framework just simply because it's really easy to just say like, you know, Z dash one, Z dash two, and then you know for a fact, no matter what order they are in the HTML file, they are gonna be stacked the way that you want them. Uh, but in this case, you know, Z, da, Z index of one and Z index of two, um, is, it's gonna do what we want. And because we have this a different background, it should, let's give it a padding too. I don't wanna look at it and it'll look ugly, I guess is, <laughs> is my, my fear. So if we look at this now, it shouldn't look ugly. Hopefully not. Let's see. Well, uh, you know, it's something. Not sure exactly what's going on here. I didn't do the default content because, 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 because it are. No, it did. Look, it's right there. Why isn't it coming through? Let's do this cap let's do uh bottom zero left zero right zero top auto uh 
<laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, so as you can see, where did that go? Ooh, I don't like it when it does that. Okay, again, HubSpot. I put in default content, but because I'm working in an area already and it saved a bunch of cookies or whatever about my session that I'm doing testing, it decided out that I don't have content in these fields even though I put default content, so it overwrote them. So what do I do now? Do I, uh, I guess I need to, is there a save button or does it do it automatically? So what if I do caption one and I go back? Where's the green? Yeah, see, see, do you see this? So now if I want to see how they all look, I have to go through and I have to I don't know. It's just rough. It's just rough out here. Getting me all up in arms about you know that that's a lot of padding. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie about that. I see it. But also, I don't know, I guess this white text on this gray doesn't look too bad either. Yeah, that's enough captions. Let's get rid of that padding. Try to. Uh but you know what? Let's we don't need the let's do TV. Top bottom. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. One last thing. Text align. Capital C? I don't think so. Enter. Boom. Okay. So just like that. Now we have a passable <laughs> a passable slider module with caption. Beautiful, right? And this can go on any page. So let's go ahead and add it to a page. Let's go to our templates. Uh so uh we we've got we made this general flex template. But and I'm going to delete this home preset right now because it's not too much, right? I feel like we're overloading system here. Boom, deleted it. So we'll just play with this general flex template for now. But just so you know, in a, in a real situation, what would normally happen is in this template, I would put the site header, the site footer, the site banner, which, you know, is typically I build a home page banner and then I put in options to make it an inner page banner. So it's one module uh, so that it works on every page. Um, so that, that's what I would put in this, this, uh, template. And then I would clone this template to create other pages. And then I would just change the modules as I go for those presets. And then when I go to create the pages in the page editor or, uh, in the, the content staging area or in the website pages area, then I just have to pick those presets and do whatever changes or modifications that need to be made and publish the page. So real simple. Now, one thing I do want you to notice is that on this template, we are excluding the domain style sheets. We are not linking any style sheets. We are not linking any JavaScript to this template. I don't. You can if you want to, but in this situation, with this technique, I guess, if you want to get weird about it, you don't have to. What happened? Oh, it grouped it for some reason. That's not supposed to happen. Let me delete this. All right. So. The situation is this, there are no modules in the header. There are no modules in the footer. There's one module in the body. The body module that is there is the slick slider module that we just created right here. There are no style sheets or JavaScript files attached to the templates at all. They are all attached to the module. Right, well, somewhere. They're hiding, they're there, right here. They're all attached to the module. Now, you might ask, what happens if you use two of the same modules? So you're going to have slick.css, slick.themes.css, really.css, and slick.js all attached to this module that's attached to a, a template several times. Now, from what I understand, HubSpot will take every instance of the same file and just use one instance of that file. Not, not necessarily merge it because it's the same file. It's just like they recognize it and they say, oh, well, all of these modules need this file, but at least one of them needs this file, so we will apply this file. If there's different instances of the same, of like if you had Slick 1 and Slick 2, even if they were the same stuff on the inside, uh, Slick 2 is never attached, HubSpot would know to grab Slick 2. It has to be attached to the module, but if it's attached to multiple modules, 
it shouldn't give it to the page multiple times. So you'll never have that problem. That is what makes this so powerful is that these modules are completely self-contained, but they play well together. So that, that's that's the the technique, which doesn't sound great, but that's that's what I'm talking about. And that, that's what makes this so powerful because then what you're doing is you're building a stable of custom modules to create templates out of and your company well, you know, you, you just, you're, you're phasing out the developer in a way. And what, the more modules you have, the less need you have for someone to build something for you. It's good. It's good stuff. Okay. Uh, so that is the slick slider. That is my rant. Um, these are the options that you can play with. These are the docs. You can go to kenwheeler.github.io backslash slick to get here. I will put a link in the description. I will put a link in the description of my really.css framework as well. And uh, if you want, to, there's a, I'm, I want to show you, I wanted to show you like, uh, there's a usage section and a setting section. I mean, I know you can see these up here, uh, WordPress. I clicked on that, but we're not doing WordPress. Um, you can, if you, if you know what you're looking at here, you, you can go through and you can figure out that, okay, I want to play with the, the, the previous arrow, you can actually, as you can see, the default is set to this button. So you can actually set this to be a different HTML element or whatever, uh, give it a different class or you know whatever you wanna do and that'll work. And you do all of these settings, as you can see up here in these examples, right here, right? You do all those in the module, right there. You just put the, plug those in. You wanted to have a responsive setup. You can you can do that. You can do that all right there. And because it has all the slick stuff attached to the module, it'll work no matter where you look at it. Where you look at it in a preview, whether you look at it in sorry this preview. So this is a preview for the actual template containing this again with nothing attached to the actual template. Same thing, right? It looks a little better because you don't have that sidebar on the side. Default content, obviously. There you have it. Um, yeah, I mean, really, I don't know. I don't think there's much else I can show you that would be of interest with uh, the slick.js slider. But you know what? If uh, if I think of anything, I'll, I'll, I'll just expand on this. But for now, that's, uh, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.